All right, Cash and Sport fam, welcome to another episode of Olympics Talk. We're talking um, rowing and canoeing today, uh, touching on a couple of factors, you know, the finances that help you to perform. We've touched on this before, but we've got a federation today that has really good finances and help and has sponsors that help them to form a good training program, um, which leads them to consistent medals and uh, looking into the future of both um, federations in terms of qualification qualification for Tokyo and who's actually going um, but yeah we're talking sands today about uh, rowing and canoeing starting off at rowing uh, these guys have a really good program a really really good program yeah. um, from your past experience of having seen rowing what is what has it been like I mean you used to train with them back at Tux what was it like there for me, I think it was just the, the consistent, high-performance nature of their whole program. They've yeah. got a great guy, Roger Barrow. He's, he's fantastic. He's really been around that scene. He's um, implemented a program at Tux and at, at the High Performance Center that just produces medal, medal winners. They yeah. may, may not be Olympic medalists only, but they're also in, in SA Champs in other world champs coming home yeah. with the medal. So th there's a lot to be said about a consistent program, a high excellence program and a high yeah. performance program that he's implemented there. Nothing kudos to him, kudos to his junior structures as well. He's got some good hits underneath him in the junior national program. And yeah. to, to see the, the, you know, you see the gold medals, but I saw those guys every day to see, yeah. and then you look at them and you go, hold on, there's something good here. Yeah. Um, they're consistently out on the water, they're training, they're in the gym, and, and yeah. really looking after their, their performances. Yeah, and uh, you know, one thing that's, that's really compelling with them is the fact that they have a really solid base. I mean, they're based at the Rodeplat yeah. Dam in Pretoria. They, they're also um, based at the High Performance Center in Pretoria as well. So they've got two bases where you know they can actually go out onto the water in a in a specific facility that's designed for them, um, and yeah. they can just perform. And then from there go uh, go out into into almost more like a scientific testing field, which is the high performance center. And again, get the best of coaches, get the best of everything. But on but yeah. underpinning that is good sponsorship um, and you know leadership. Um, so. On the leadership side, they're sorted as well because the program has been there for a long time. You saw it all the way back, you know, when you were trying to get into, uh, when you were playing hockey and, and, and training at Tux. But behind them is a strong sponsorship team. I mean, they, they're backed by RMB. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they've got a whole number of other sponsors, Olympic Paints, uh, Pablo Park, Garage, the security guys, Barker Insurance, Team Power Trust. And then on top of that, obviously, they also still get support from SASCOC and the, the yeah. Hockey Federation and the, the National Lottery. Um, so it, it really, really helps. I mean, we've touched on finances and how that but, helps. Yeah. Previous episodes. But the two work together. So you've got a good program and yeah. that attracts sponsors. You've got the sponsors money to be able to facilitate a good program. But yeah. even without the sponsors' money, you know your R and Bs, they haven't been with them for call it ten years. But yeah, they they've consistently believed in something, and and yeah. and Roger Barrow has been, you know, he's consistently set up a high performance program to be able to produce the results yeah. that sponsors can buy into. But the yeah. attention to detail, the small things, that they just they, you know, it's small margins in rowing. Yeah, it's really small margins. You've got to be a certain weight to be. In, in the boat, yeah. physique, you know, power, those kind of things. It's, it's, everything was just thought after. You can see they were on a plan, on a program. So as, as much as there's money and excellence, but yeah. the two come together, you know, money yeah. breeds excellence and excellence brings more sponsors into the system. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's important to, to have, you know, a, a set structure and you can see it in the preparation of the athletes and it, it seeps through you know, it comes down from from the national coach. It seeps down into in, into the team, and you you know, there's yeah. it's like so. Alex Ferguson with those class of ninety two. Those guys will always be known as his children because you know the philosophy, the way he trained them, the way he believed yeah. in youth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it just kept on producing, producing, producing this 
convey about of great athletes. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and that's the thing with any good program and any, I think lots of, lots of federations are aspiring to be the rowing of South Africa. Yeah. So to, to, how do you set it up? There's a blueprint right there. So yeah. there's, there's a lot of, you know, we need to look at that and, and applaud that program and go, it's consistently brought back medals. And how does yeah. it do that year after year? And I think yeah. I can touch on that on the, you know, the prospects of Olympics and the, the medals that they've, that rowing team has brought back for, for South Africa. Yeah, and looking at those rowing medals that they've brought back, I mean, since 2004, they've brought back medals. Uh, in 2004, yeah. they won bronze. Um, that was at Athens in the men's cockles pair. Um, that was uh, Donovan Czech and uh, Roman Duclemente. I remember watching that. I didn't actually watch yeah. the race. I think so, they surprised a lot of people. And, yeah. you know, we all caught it on the news, you know, and people I remember that crazy. with the as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then in in um, in London in 2012, uh, we also got uh, we got a gold medal at the in the men's yeah. cutlass uh, four. The four. And that race yeah. was was amazing because I remember watching that that actual race because I, there was a whole bunch of hype around how we'd gotten to 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 the final, and you know we weren't re we, we were we were rowing well, but then they 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 you know, I mean you know how our media is. We had a, a a pair or a four of James Thompson, cool. John Smith, Matthew Britton, and mm-hmm. Cesar Andlova, which, you know, there was a whole media hype around how there's this black rower in, a, in the boat and, you know, we're in the final. And then the guys go and win it. I mean, that was yeah. amazing. And, um, and that's the beauty of it. I mean, you know, we, we look at also the next year in 2016, yeah. the, the Cockless Pair also win the silver medal. Yeah. And and that for me is, I wish like we, we've been able to, I think this is a wish for anyone, I guess, is to be yeah. able to monetize those medals a, li- yeah. a little bit more. So when yeah. you return home, what do you do? Because, um, you know, yes, it, it helps you get more sponsors and I'm sure the sponsors have been attracted to the program based on those medals. But for yeah. those individual athletes as well, you know, how, how do they, you know, especially in a team environment, how do you yeah. monetize the, the medals and come back and attract sponsors in, yeah. in an individual but team perspective, if I can call yeah. it that, because we've we've had we've had teams, you know, you always have a team that wins a gold medal, but it's also made yeah. up in individuals who are looking at sponsors, money, and that. So it, it becomes an interesting one. You know, it's it's it you but you can see how the program has attracted money based on those performances. Yeah, true. Um and, and looking at at the attractions and, and the athletes that have that have done well. You know, they've they a whole bunch of them have done well in the past, but there's a whole bunch of athletes that have been you know picked on earmarked now to go and represent yeah. us in, in in Tokyo, Japan. And you know, we've the, the teams went through qualifying. Um, so basically, what happens is there's a whole bunch of qualifying events um, where you go and race internationally. Um, prior to um, you know Saskok. Well, announcing the initial squad, you know, remember we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. There'd been races and so on and so on going on. So rowing wasn't officially announced as in part of the initial squad, but we do now know that, um, you know, Jake Green and uh, Luke Daffin were paired up uh, for the men's heavyweight pair boat and they have qualified. So they will definitely be there. Yeah. Um, and then, um, you know, a couple, a few months ago, and uh, well, about a month ago, actually, on the twenty second of May, yeah, um, there was a final Olympic qualifying uh, regatta that was held in Lucerne, um, and we also got another boat to qualify there. Um, the men's, um, the men's four, they won their heat, the semi final and the final, um, and they've yeah. now qualified for the Olympics. So we're going to have two boats. Uh, representing, yeah. unfortunately, and and, and that was also football. like a lot of excitement was around that because they won, uh, I think, just a semi final, and they yeah. needed to win the final, and it yeah. was quite a close final, but they 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 won it. And for me, that's that's a medal hopeful, and yeah. and you know you don't want to put pressure on anyone going into the Olympics, but you you know who, you know, our medal hopefuls are going into those Olympics. Yeah, congratulations to Lawrence Britton, Carl Scoonby, John Smith, and uh, Sandro Torrente. Those guys are going to the Olympics. They qualify in Lucerne. They had the amazing uh, performance in the, in the semifinal and in the final. And yeah, yeah. we're looking for, for medals from, from rowing. Um, moving on to um, a brief touch on, on canoeing. Um, another sport in, 
you know, it's another boating sport. Um, a lot of people confuse the, the two because they, they, the they look very similar, right? Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a similar type of setup. It's a small boat, but um, canoeing is the one where you basically use your own wind power and then the rowing is also the same, but there's almost like a contraption which is built into the yeah. boat, whereas canoeing is literally you and, and your paddle and you move side to side, whereas rowing is basically just you pulling the, the, the oar and using uh, centrifugal force to move you through. You know, look at me being a scientist. The water. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> look at you, eh? <laughs> School yeah. coming out, at least, yeah? Hey, School man, you know, out. it's all of these gym <laughs> sessions, you know, there's, there's that, hey, that oh, gym, sorry. that rowing machine is not nice. When you're rowing 5Ks, no. I, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's touch on the canoeing. Yeah, looking at canoeing, uh, canoeing is 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 on a different trajectory. They don't have as much support as rowing. Um, yeah. Smaller federation, um, you know. There's, uh, you know, there's there isn't as and and you can clearly see the difference. You know, we we do get good uh, canoeists if you look at the the yeah. doozy. And yeah, yeah. That's, sorry, I was gonna sorry to interject there. That's the thing. We've got great canoeists. And and yeah. if you you know grew up in Maritzburg or know anything about Peter Maritzburg and KZN region, you'll know the doozy is a big event. Yeah, exactly. We've got canoe sprint races in South Africa that you know, so the and the youngsters that come out of those programs, I've I've seen that canoeing pro canoeing essay program in terms of the young investment they make in also young black canoeists in that environment. Yeah. So you you hoping that you know I know I know someone like Bridget Hartley that has yeah. been to call it two Olympics already. Yeah. Um. So so that's one 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 person that's been carrying you know the sport in terms of female representative as well. Yeah. And then yeah we were hoping that some of the you know more rowing qualification this year, but yeah, it doesn't seem like it at the moment. Um, yeah. unless it's, there's other qualification tournaments coming up. At the moment, it doesn't seem like anyone from, the rowing, uh, from canoeing sorry, has qualified. Yeah, um, yeah. I looked into, into canoeing and the, and the qualification. Um, and unfortunately, it, it doesn't, well, I can almost confirm now that they didn't. Um, so we had the, the ICF Canoe Sprint World Cup uh, in Banao in Russia. Um, and we had two athletes that went there. We had Christian Kutsia. Christian Kutsia has a former short course sprinter, but he'd moved up to the, to the 1000 to try and qualify at the 1000. Um, and, uh, Esti Olifir, um, she had, um, she, she was a, she's a sprinter as well. Both of them did well. So the thing is that over the weekend of, of the ICF canoe sprint, uh, finals in, um, the World Cup, I mean, in, in Russia, you qualify over a weekend and the mm -hmm. set the, the set qualifying um, race was on the Friday. Both, unfortunately, didn't make it at that race. Unfortunately, both failed to qualify and um, the Federation is now looking to uh, 2023 um, as mm -hmm. qualifying for France uh, in 2024. Um, and unfortunately, that's the state of the, of, of the situation right now in, in canoeing. Do you, know, do you know what the positive thing though I, I you know I like about these Olympics is that yeah. there's only three years now to the yeah. next one. Yeah. So any federation, you don't make it, you don't quite do well even at the Olympics. Build, just yeah. build, keep building the momentum till the next one. Yeah. Um, you would have you would have four years. You will come back. Some athletes retire. Some don't. But yeah. now you even even if you say, can you stick around for another three years? Have you got yeah. it into your or two and a half years help us qualify? Yeah. So that's that's what I I am going to the positive that we're going to take out from yeah. you know, these Olympics being one year too late yeah. is that then the 2024 are literally coming up in 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 three years time, yeah. and by then build on your success, build on your plans and your program to be yeah. able to be successful at the next one. Yeah. Yeah, and um, you know that essentially wraps up our, our episode today. Um, it's a short one. We don't want to go too much into detail. We've got an uh, interesting one lined up for next week. Um, hit the subscribe button if you'd like to follow us and 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 check out our content every week. Follow Sanani Mangisa on Twitter at 
Is it? Uh, have you changed your handle again? Sanani Mangisa. I had <laughs> to. I had to. <laughs> I'm, so I'm behaving now. I'm yeah. on the straight and narrow. I'm yeah. not trolling anyone. Yeah. Catch the sneak my, ahead. It's, yeah. The sneak ahead. Sneaker, sports, and wine. We focus yep. now. Cash follow sports, Sanani on Twitter. Olympics talk. Yeah, at Sanani Mangisa, and follow me on on Twitter as well at Cash and Sport. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button if you like this content. We've got another one coming up next week. And we'll hopefully be talking to a person or have a guest next time. But yeah, there we go. We actually have a guest next week. Thanks for watching. Cheers.